Hello and welcome to module 6.9. Uh, now in the previous eight modules, we've been through the systems one at a time and you've seen the system plans, how many satellites they have, how many they should have. Now the point we want to make with this module is that these plans are always changing as different countries have different issues such as budget constraints. In the case of Galileo, you saw how two satellites went into an unplanned orbit and so on. And so just last week, we had a big conference in the United States where representatives from the different systems gave an update of their system. And I wanted to give you that update as a single module uh, to show you what it's like. Because what happens uh, is there are these regular international meetings where you get updates like this. So uh, I advise you in months to come after 2014 and in years to come to keep on checking for updates because anything that's written down will probably be changed in a few months. So um, let's, let's go and look at what these different systems had to say for themselves at this conference. So the conference that just happened was the Institute of Navigation GNSS Plus conference. Uh, it, took, it always takes place in the US and always takes place in September. It's the world's largest GNSS conference, also the world's largest navigation conference. So it's a very good place to go to see representatives from the major GNSS constellations uh, tell you what's going on in their systems. Then uh, exactly six months later, there's another conference where a similar thing happens, where they get together uh, all or most of the representatives from all or most of the GNSS constellations in Munich, uh, Germany. And so either of these two conferences are really good places uh, for the latest update from the major GNSS operators. There are many other navigation conferences, but these are the two that specifically seek out the operators, and the operators use them as a, a place to update the public on what's going on with their systems. Uh, so this is, the, this is the kind of thing that happens. You, you have these uh, representatives up on stage, and they each in turn uh, give updates on their systems. And you'll, you'll see I've, I've put the people who were there last week and their titles. These are the senior people from each of the different government organizations from each of the different countries uh, that, that give updates on their systems. And this is a summary of what they said. So let's just go through this uh, one at a time. Uh, with GPS, things are on track, nothing different from before, but, uh, but they uh, did give an update on when they expect the next launch. So the, we remember when we looked at GPS uh, orbits and signals, we saw that the current signals are from satellites known as Block 2F. And so another Block 2F satellite is going up in the month of October 2014, uh, maybe right around when you're doing this MOOC. Uh, actually, met probably a little bit before you saw this video. and. Uh, and then we, we looked into future GPS-3 in the beginning of this week, and uh, the news from the GPS operators was that the first GPS-3 satellite is expected to be available for launch in the beginning of 2016, and then we'll see GPS-3 build out over the years following 2016, because they will launch a few each year. So then Beidou announced that they will launch between four and five of their next generation Beidou satellites. And you remember this was called Beidou 3. They'll launch four to five of those in 2015. And they expect to have a global system in place by 2020. And that global system is planned to be made up of five geostationary satellites, three inclined geosynchronous satellites and 27 MEOs. So there's the big difference. That one is the big difference from the current Beidou system. You'll recall from earlier this week that the current Beidou system has four MEOs, and, the, and that's their regional system, and their global system will have 27. So it'll, it'll look and feel like GPS in that sense. But they will maintain some geos and inclined geosynchronous satellites. Uh, then QZSS has no launches planned for 2015. And you'll recall in the slides on QZSS that we looked at just a few videos ago, the original plan was to have seven satellites. So that plan's been uh, updated downwards that they uh, are planning just four satellites now by 2018. 
and those four will be as follows. Three inclined geosynchronous, so there's one inclined geosynchronous satellite right now, so there'll be another two, and then one geostationary satellite. And then the other news was that this LEX signal, the experimental signal we looked at when we talked about QZSS, uh, will still exist, but it, it won't be experimental anymore. It'll become operational, it will be called L6, and will provide augmentation data analogous to WAS, which you learned about earlier, but in a way that can provide centimeter accuracy over the region of Japan. So that's something interesting for high accuracy GNSS. And finally, Galileo had updates, and this was uh, something of great interest to everybody listening, because you remember that Galileo just launched its first two full operational vehicles, the first two FOV satellites, and they went into unexpected orbits. They were released too early. We just discussed that in the previous video, uh, previous video two videos ago. Uh, and so the, the most important news from Galileo was that they fully intend to recover these two satellites to, and try and make them operational. And the status of those satellites is because of the high eccentricity, you remember we looked at that, that the eccentricity was a number like 0 0.24, and they expected a much lower number. So because those satellites were had quite an eccentric orbit, the Doppler got quite high, more than two times higher than what they would like. So it was 9.6 kilohertz for comparison, GPS is plus or minus 4.2, and you'll remember you worked that out yourselves uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so to allow a typical receiver to be able to acquire these satellites and to do the kind of search across frequency bins exactly as you learned a couple of weeks ago, they are going to use up some of the propellant in the satellites to get them into a more circular orbit, or I should say less eccentric orbit, and they, they expect to be able to not get all the way down to where they should have been, but at least get to plus or minus 6.8 kilohertz, which should be enough for all receivers to be able to acquire these satellites in the first place. So that was, the, in a way, the most interesting news because it was the biggest problem any of these constellations were facing. And then the news about future launches was that they do plan to have launches in 2015. And, and uh, just like this previous launch, Galileo puts two satellites on a, sat on a rocket at a time. So they will have a launch with two satellites. But sometime later in 2015, date to be announced, and it was will be after this investigation into what happened with that Soyuz rocket, because it was a Russian Soyuz rocket that incorrectly put these satellites into this orbit. So once that investigation is completed and they can trust the next launch, they will go ahead with it sometime later in 2015.